our text is the Gospel lesson for today, is the 17th chapter of Luke, and Jesus' name, Amen. A biography is someone's life story written by another. The word comes from two Greek words meaning life and writing. A biography is a selective life history. Often, we read the biography of a well-known person because of a pivotal moment or a series of events that brought him or her notoriety. The author interprets every fact and anecdote of their subject's life in the light of that pivotal moment. If someone was writing your biography, what themes would that person highlight? Similarly, periods of our lives in which we're plagued by sin, guilt, and shame or sadness are often just referred to as bad chapters. Are there chapters from your past that you might ask your biographer to leave out? The life of Christ intersected with the Samaritan with leprosy. And that man's biography took on a whole new theme. For him, like you, your life story is the story of your life in Christ. The Samaritan's left birth life story was perhaps quite bad until his encounter with Jesus the Christ. We know scant details about the Samaritan other than he was a Samaritan, and that meant that it was not only prejudice from the Jews that he had to deal with, but he had grown up with a corrupted religion, a skewed view of God. And then came leprosy. We don't know how he contacted the leprosy, but we know it meant exclusion from family, friends, and social interaction. Now his only friends seem to be people who probably hate him if their lives weren't so pathetic. But then there's this encounter with Jesus. We know little about the Samaritan, but we know lots about Jesus. Miracles, preaching, a perfect life, a death for the sins of the world, resurrection from the dead. And now this Samaritan is eternally famous for the miracle that Jesus did for his faith as his Savior. Go, your faith has made you well. Go, your faith has sealed your salvation. Even the word Samaritan has become famous or rather infamous. At the start of the journey to Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples came to a Samaritan village that refused to welcome him. James and John were rebuked by Jesus because they wanted to call fire down from heaven to destroy that village. But now those disciples are learning that response to the message of the gospel breaks down racial barriers. People from the far corners of the earth will sit down at the banquet of salvation. Your life story would have a very different plot, except for Christ entering it. How does your biography read? Is it nondescript? With few details anyone would write down in a book? Nothing to be proud of? Are you fearful? that there are chapters in your life that might bring the wrath or the scorn of God in the final judgment or the scorn of other Christians in the congregation. We would skip over our sexual indiscretions, same-sex sex attractions, financial dishonesty, or drug experimentation. What about our encounters in the military when we fought in wars, no matter which side we were on. Or even our disbelief 
of God's word. But how do you see your life when you consider that God is your biographer? He gave you life. And his word and work create and sustain saving faith in your life. Your biography as a Christian is subsumed in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The life of the Christian, from thought to grave, comes after the prologue of the person and work of the Savior. The Spirit worked faith in Christ's work in you. So now, you stand forgiven of all those bad chapters. God knows what we have done. God knows what we have thought. There is no sin so bad that Jesus has not paid for it on the cross. Wash it away in the waters of baptism. Renewed your life in the absolution. Jesus is not ashamed to be called your brother. He's not ashamed to invite you here to the family table. The epilogue of the individual Christian's life has not yet been written. But we've seen the spoiler in the pages of the gospel. The Apostle Paul summarizes it up this way. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Now we get to those Christian obituaries that came with your worship folder. They come from the Lutheran service book agenda, pages 41, 48, and 49. They were written to accompany the right of Christian burial. These are not eulogies written in praise of the deceased Christian's life. On the contrary, the Christian obituary is a bi biography of one's life in Christ, written in praise of God's work in and through the Christian. It is the story of how God brought that person to faith and how every respect of your life before and after is now in Christ. It is every bit as incredible and gratitude inspiring as the short story of the Samaritan. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs> and the peace of God which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the life of the life of the Lord. Amen.